Hi, so today I'm going to give you a little demonstration in uh, how to print using your jelly uh, printing plate. Um, so in your box, uh, your printing workshop box this week, you'll find one of these still in the packet. Um, you'll also find that you've got a blue mat to lay down on your work surface and also a thin piece of uh, rough paper um, just as an extra protection um, to catch any spills of paint and things. And you've got three tubes of paint. Uh, this is acrylic paint so it can be washed with water. Um, we've got three colours and they come in these little squeezy bottles so they'll just need a little shake and um, you can see they've got a little hole and you can squeeze them out when we start printing. Um, you'll also find in your box um, a plastic tray which we've included so that you've got somewhere to put your roller. So this is the roller um, and this will be used to spread the paint onto your printing plate. Um, later on I'll show you how to do that. So that's somewhere to put your, your roller when you're not using it. Um, also in your box you'll find some different materials that we'll be using to create different uh, textures on our plate to print. Um, so I've got some bubble wrap, um, some hessian, and some kind of uh, corrugated card, some swirly cor corrugated card. Um, I've also got some bits of uh, paper. This is just um, scrap paper that I've cut out into shapes. Um, and I'll show you uh, a great technique that you can use with your jelly plate to create layers. Um, I've also got strips of paper as well. So if you've got pieces of paper that, at home that you want to cut out, you can make your own shapes. But we've included some in there for you to use as well. Um, and then you've got the paper, the printing paper. So you've got plenty of A4 um, cartridge paper. So it's quite a good thickness. Um, hopefully you've got enough for, um, for everything that you need, but you can get through quite a lot of paper when you're printing. So if you do run out, just let us know and we can, we can provide you with some more if you're really getting into it um, and you find you're getting through the paper. So I'll just start by moving these aside um, and I'll show you how to open up your jelly plate. Um, so you just pop it open. Um, and move the side. And then, I mean, mine looks a bit green, and this is actually because I've used it quite a lot, so it's still got remnants of paint on it, which is why it's, it's that colour. Yours is probably going to look clear, um, a bit cleaner than mine, but it doesn't matter if it's got that um, little bit of colour on it, that's fine. So it's got this cover on either side that you can take off. So it's just clear plastic. So if you take that off and put that to one side with the packaging, because then at the end, it once it's been cleaned, it can go back in there to be used again. So then you just lay that onto your paper and you see it's quite thick and it's quite robust. Um, so it can be um, it can be washed just with water you can um, just use a damp cloth or a wipe, or you can put it in some um, some soapy water in a washing up bowl and do it that way and then dry it off. But um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite strong. Um, just not to use anything too sharp. It, that's the only thing is not to press anything too sharp into it, but um, everything that you were using today will be fine. So to start off, we're just going to print using one colour to begin with. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, the purple. So give it a little shake. Um, oh, you want to make sure that you're wearing um, an apron that we've provided. Uh, these are water-based paints. They can be washed with, with water, but you don't want them getting on your clothes because if they dry, they might be difficult to get out. Um, but obviously on your hands and things they'll wash off uh, but yeah best to protect your clothes um, and if you want to put any extra newspaper on the work surface that's fine um, so then you can just go straight and apply the paint 
straight to the plate. Um, and I've used kind of a large pea size amount. I've done one in that corner, one in that corner. Now what you might find is once you roll it out, if you feel it's not enough, you can always add some more. So then you take your roller and you just roll it over it, your blobs. And do it one way and then you can turn and do it the other way. And as you go, you keep going over it until it looks like it's completely covered. So you just do it quite gentle pressure. Make sure you go to the edges and then you get a nice covering. I think that looks like it's enough. And the thing with this is if, if you don't quite get it right, it doesn't matter. You can just uh, try again. I can always um, use the same piece of paper twice. And if you printed on it and it didn't come out very well, you can always print over that same one again. So there we are. I'm going to pop that in the tray. And then first off, I'm going to use some bubble wrap. Um, and the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to open it out. I'm going to lay it on top of the plate and just apply some pressure. So I'm not moving it around, I'm just pushing it down flat onto the, onto the plate. Okay, do that and then pull that off. And you'll see some of the paints come off on the bubble wrap and it's meant that it's left some marks on your plate. And then you can go straight ahead and take a piece of paper line it up if you line it up with the paper that you've got underneath you know that you can get it in the same place so that's a really good guide so you just hold it on the edge and let it fall flat and then if you just rub all over the paper working from the, the middle to the outside just applying some even pressure around the edges that's it There we are. And then we can do the big reveal and see how it's come out. The great thing about printmaking is you never really know until you take it off. It's always a surprise. <laughs> no two prints will ever be the same. And this one, you can see. So it's come out quite light, so I could have used a bit more ink. Um, but that's fine. Because what I can use this one for is this will be a really nice background for another one um, uh, as we build up the layers. And I'll show you how to do that in a, in a little while. So you can put that to one side. Um, now I like to leave the paint on and not actually clean this off. You can clean it up and dry it and to put, apply a new colour. But actually the paint dries very quickly. Um, and so it doesn't mix too much. Actually, you get a really nice layering effect. So I'm now going to use um, a red. I'm going to do exactly the same. Now I might use a little bit more because I think it wasn't quite enough. So I'm just going to do three little blobs. And I'm not going to clean the roller either. I'm going to let them mix. Um, and do exactly the same. it one way, turning and doing the other, making sure I get it right to the edges. And if this looks a bit mottled because there's a bit more red and a bit more purple in areas, that's fine. It doesn't have to be completely even. It's quite a nice effect if it doesn't mix completely. Right, so now I'm going to try a combination of a few things. I'm going to try this corrugated card. Um, so just by pressing it down, again, not moving it around once you've put it down, but just pressing it, you can, kind of, you can rub it firmly down. And then lift it up. And you can see the paints come off onto it and it's left. So these areas will come out lighter when you print them because you've taken the paint away. So I'm going to try it this way as well. Press that down on there. That's 
that's really nice so you get them two crossing over and I'm also going to just put on this hessian as well see if we get nice texture coming out there there we are and then pull that up let's have a look so now I get the paper so you have to be fairly quick at getting the paper on because you don't want it to dry too much because it's less likely to come out so again give it a good rub and then do the big reveal let's have a look oh, 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 oh. Ah. So there you are. So you get the different textures. So you can see here where we've done the hessian and you've got the, the pattern of the material. And then this is where you've, we've overlapped the two. So you've got the swirly paper going that way, swirly paper going that way. So you see that's really nice. And also you've got the purple and um, the red kind of mixing. So you get the, the two tones as well, which is quite interesting. So you get the different textures and the different colours. Um, so there'll be two really nice backgrounds to do. So um, I'm now going to use the yellow. And I'm again, I'm not going to clean it up. I'm just going to go um, over the top. Let them mix. Um, so again, I've done three, three blobs and roll out so you can start kind of producing quite a lot of prints quite quickly and you just keep applying keep trying things out so that's nice because they've kind of you've got a little um mottled effect there um what else have i got to try so the other thing um to show you is um, using the paper so you can just use these paper and you can cut out different shapes you could even cut out photographs if you had like a silhouette of somebody's um, profile or their face you could use that you can also use um, you can also use leaves which are really interesting actually I see if I can show you if I can find some to show you because they're really they, you you get a nice um, effect with the leaves i'll show you how to do this first so you just place them on and you don't need to push down hard you just place them gently and then just secure them because they'll stick they'll stick in place i've also got some strips so you can place them on like that just gently place them down like this and then you can um, find it. you can do an added effect in that you can so take a, something like a this is just a plastic bag that I've got and you can just do this kind of thing And then you can take one of your prints that you've already done. So I've taken the one here that I did with the bubble wrap. And just line it up. And then press down. And make sure covering it all, going right to the edges. You don't have to press really hard, it's just with the the flat of your fingers, giving it a good rub, and then peeling it off. There we are. And so there you can see, you can still see the underneath where we had the circles. So this was the print that we did before. And here as well and then you've got the new print and actually you can still see the patterns from the previous print because we didn't wash the plate 
um, you can still see the shadow of what we did before. Which So you can see why kind of building up and doing lots of layers um, gives you some really surprising and uh, interesting results. Uh, which is why it's nice to just play around because you, there are lots of surprises <laughs> unexpected. You just play around and see what you can do. Um, right, take these off. They do stick quite a lot. Some nice strips actually there. Nice print on the strip. Take those off. Yeah. Yep. And then I'm gonna add some more um I'm going to do some more of the yellow. Roll it again. I have somewhere. Oh, now it would be much better if I had a bigger leaf. But I've got just a little bit of parsley here. It's not the best. Um, but if you can collect some things from your garden, um, you can get some really interesting effects by putting the leaves on, and then um, printing that, and that leaves a, a gap. But also, then when you take it off, so I can just. I don't know whether that one's going to come out, but you can get the impression of the leaf. Um, I don't think that one's going to be big enough now, so what I'll do is I'll try. As you can see, you kind of just play along and <laughs> work it out as you go along. See what works best. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm going to try and see if I can print it. So one I've done before, this one, printing again with this, place it down. same place <laughs> that didn't really work because we just got this block up here but you can hang on to it even if you do something that you're not that keen on because we can print over that again and get another layer and I think as you build up the layers it can be really interesting um because what we can do is then take that off and try again <laughs> see if that works So as you can see, it needs a lot of experimenting. You can come up with lots of different um, ways of, and different effects. But it's something to get you started with um, and hopefully giving you some ideas. But yeah, try lots of different things and, and the leaves do work well as well. Um, I'll show you some that I've done earlier. Um, so you can do, so here I place some bigger leaves on and you can see it's left um, a gap where you can see the, the print I did previously. Um, but it's also, um, then when you take, remove the leaves and print it straight off, I can find it. Let's see how you end up with quite a lot of. Oh, yeah. So you can actually see then you've got a print of the leaf as well and it's picked up the veins on the leaf. So yeah, lots to try. Um, 
so see how you get on and I look forward to seeing all your fabulous prints oh to clean it up so as I say you can just take it off and you can either just run it under the tap and um, wipe it with a, a wet cloth just a damp cloth um, and then leave it to dry or dry it with some kitchen roll and with the roller you can run it under the tap um, uh, you can use some washing up liquid if you if you want to and then just leave it to dry or again dry it with some kitchen roll and the same with the palette and um, so it should all wash off quite easily um, yeah so I hope you enjoyed finding out more about this printing process and I hope you have fun giving it a go I look forward to seeing all your lovely prints um, take care bye bye <laughs>